Okay, in Algebra 2, 1.5, problem solving using algebra now. Problem solving using algebra. The worst toy maker in the world. The cotton-headed ninny muggins. Verbal models. Okay, a verbal model is a word equation. The difference of two, or seven and two, that's just saying seven minus two, the sum of eight and nine, sum means addition, right? Um, you take the verbal and you change it into numbers. That's all you're doing with verbal models. You take whatever you're reading, like, uh, oh, I don't know, a word problem, for example, and you write them into numbers and equations. An algebraic model is a mathematical statement. Um, it could be an expression. It could be an equation. It could be an inequality. So you have to read carefully to figure out which one it's actually asking for. So in example one, the bullet train runs between the Japanese cities of Osaka and Fukuoka, I guess, and a distance of 450 kilometers. When it makes no stops, it takes two hours and 50 minutes to make the trip. What's the average speed? Well, we went over some formulas here already. Since we're talking about speed, we're talking about distance, D equals RT is what we're talking about. We know that it goes a distance of 400 and uh, 50 uh, kilometers. So next we need to make time all one unit. And currently we don't have that. We have two hours and 15 minutes. So how can I change two hours and 15 minutes into oh, maybe just minutes or maybe just hours? Well, um, 15 minutes is a fourth of an hour, right? 15 minutes is one fourth of an hour or 0.25. So I could rewrite that as 2.25. So when I fill this in, I know that it's 550 for the distance. I know that the time it takes it is 2.25 because in terms of hours I rewrote this um, in 2.25. So since it's R times that, I divide both sides by 2.25. The 2.25 cancels out, so 550 divided by 2.25. I get approximately 244.44 kilometers per hour is how fast the bullet train is going. You have my demands. You own a lawn care business and you want to know how much money you spend on gas to travel to uh, out of town clients. Um, in a typical week, you drive 600 miles and use 40 gallons of gas. Gas costs $1.25 per gallon and your truck's fuel efficiency is 21 miles per gallon on the highway and 13 miles per gallon in town. So you want to develop an algebraic model. This is what you can use. Um, the total miles that you're going to do are on the highway and in the local, right? So we'll make the highway X and the local Y. We know that the total amount of miles you went is 600. We know that you went 21 miles, right, um, for highway. We know you went 13 miles for local. So there's the equation. But X and Y also both stand for the number of gallons used. So when we're talking about um, this up here, we can also use, there's 40 uh, gallons of gas total used, so you used highway plus the local equals the 40 gallons of gas. And we need to combine the two equations by solving the second one for y. So if I solve this one like we did a couple sections ago for y, there's a positive x, so I can subtract um, by x on both sides. I get y equals 40 minus x. That means I can take this whole item and plug it in for y. So when I do that, this is what I get. I can now distribute the 13 through. Um, so I end up with 21x. 13 times 40 um, is 520. 13 times negative x is negative 13x. So when I combine that together, 21x minus 13x, I get 8x. So now I can actually solve that equation and find out how many highway miles I actually went. So um, I can subtract 520 on both sides because it's addition. I can subtract it, and I'm trying to get the x all by itself. So I end up with 80 equals 8x, and I can divide both sides by 8, so I get x equals 10. So right there, that tells me that I know that I went um, 10 miles on the highway. So if I went 10 miles on out-of-town gas, right, I can figure out what Y is by plugging in um, the value to figure out what Y is. I plug that back into the equation that we had to solve it. Example 3, a um, water-saving faucet has a flow rate of at most 
9.6 cubic inches per second to test whether your faucet meets the standard. You time how long it takes the faucet to fill 470 cubic inch pot, obtaining a time of 35 seconds. Find your faucet's flow rate. So to find your faucet's flow rate, we will use D equals RT, because we're talking about rate again, right? And instead of the D, we're going to talk about in terms of volume. So the volume is 470, and we know that the, the time is 35 seconds. So I put it in a D equals RT, and since multiplication, we divide both sides by 35, and I figure out that the rate is approximately 13.4 inches cubed per second that gets filled. So it takes too long, so no, it does not meet the standards because it says that it needs to flow at 9.6, and it's not. It's flowing uh, more than that. It's too long. It takes too long to fill. So here's a table to determine the height of the 15 stories. Um, the lobby is 20 feet high, then the first floor is 32, and then the uh, second floor is 44, the third floor is 46 feet high, the fourth floor, and so on. So do you see a pattern here? You start at 20, and it looks like it is going up by 12 feet every single time. So the height of the building would just be what the base is, 20, plus 12 feet after whatever floor it's on. So if I said I wanted it to be the 15th floor, I would plug in a 15 there for x. So on floor 0, look, 12 times 0 is 0, plus um, 20 is 20, right? That's the lobby, floor 0. On the first floor, it's 32. When I plug in a 1, it works. When I plug in a 2, I get 44. When I plug in a 3, I get 56. When I plug in a 4, I get 68. So when I plug in the 15th, I'd plug in a 15, so I know that it should be 200 feet in the air. This from friends and family, Chaz Michael Michaels walks in. So there is your homework. Um, get started on the homework. Um, if you have any questions, please email me. Um, check the examples on the Moodle site and the website for any other assistance that I might give you.